In this video, I'm going to show you how to burn a data CD with Bizarro. Now the same steps that I'm going to show you to burn a data CD, you can also use to burn a data DVD. Now I've got some DVDs and CDs. I, I very seldom use my CDs anymore. I don't burn a lot of music to CDs like I used to, but I do use more DVDs for backing up data. So for the purpose of using this video, I'm going to use one of my CDs, uh, not because I'm going to waste it, but because I'm not going to burn the entire CD for time's sake. All right, to access Bizarro, or Bizarro go to the Applications uh, menu, go down to Sound and Video, and click on Bizarro. When it comes up, you'll see there's Audio Project, Data Project, Video Project, Disk Copy, and Burn an Image. As you can see, I've got some recent projects that I've already completed or that I've worked on. Uh, today, I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to burn a data CD. Same thing can be used to burn the DVD as well. You can go to Project, New Project, and you can burn your data DV as well. Now, in my other videos, you've probably heard me say that when you're finished, you can burn a jewel case. Like if you got a plastic case uh, that you're going to put your CD or DVD in, you can label the contents of what it's on by labeling the back of your case or the front of your case. Uh, there is a feature where you got a cover editor. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate the cover editor in this particular video, but this Bizarro does have the feature of creating yourself a cover so that you can print it out to put in your case so that that way it looks more professionally when you store them away. All right, let's go ahead and start creating ourselves a data project. Now, if you look, I've already got a folder open. Now I can close it and show you where it's at, but the data that I'm going to save is I used to teach and uh, I used to keep a lot of information on my computer scattered about. So I put some assessment files. These are some videos, I mean not videos, these are some vocabularies and some worksheets and PowerPoints and things that I did for my students in an assessment that I downloaded from the North Carolina Department of Education or instructions to help my students prepare for the final exam. I also have my assessments that I've created. I taught social studies and science. I taught more science than social studies. Uh, but as you can see, here are my nine tests that I usually give to my students throughout the year. Now, I only have these nine. These are not the only nine. I do create different test ones, test twos, test threes, and all the way to test nine. But usually, I give nine tests throughout the whole school year. You know, there's nine weeks in a quarter, and there's four quarters, so I don't really give a lot of tests. You know, a lot of other teachers and, and their subject gives tests too, so I don't want to burn students out with tests. So I think nine is a good number where I can assess them on their points. Then as it gets closer to taking the final exams, I do have some final exam practice. Now I've got multiple ones not saying that they do them all. You know, I might give one class uh, this practice, another class this practice, so they can't share answers. And the same thing about my assessments on my test. You know, I've got other folders where I have uh, different test ones that are rocks and minerals. Sometimes students get clever and they may ask other students what was on the test from other classes. So I do mix it up from time to time on the test that I have. But if you look, these are actually PDF files that I've created uh, that are assessments. I've created them in Microsoft Word. That's what we had at school and that's what I had on my computer at the time. I can use... Um, if I had the original files, I could use the office equivalent, which I won't talk much about in this particular video. I do have my assessments for social studies. You know, I give nine tests in social studies as well. So I'm going to back up these assessments onto my blank CD. Let me minimize this. I'm going to go to create a data project. Now, a data project is the contents that I'm backing up from my computer will be the same contents that's on the CD. Unlike the audio where I'm converting it to a format that I might have MP3 files on my computer, but yet it will convert it to a format that a CD player would play the audio. Whereas the video, if you got yourself a DVD player, a Blu-ray player uh, that will play video, Unlike the video file that may be MP4, uh, MKV, AVI, there's different formats that are digital formats on your computer. If I did the video project, it will convert it so that your DVD player and Blu-ray player will play it. So it's converting. So is the audio. 
Now, a disk copy will copy one to one, as the, it shows here. The image file burner will take like an image that's an ISO and extract it as it burns it to your CD. So the only two, the data project and the disk copy, are the only two that the contents on the data that you're burning will be like the source. In the case, uh, the contents that's in the folder. Now, when you're doing a disk copy, you're duplicating a disk. Like if I wanted to make, after I burnt my CDs of assessments, if I wanted to give another science teacher or social studies teacher a copy of my test, I could go back and do the data project, but more likely after I burn it, I'll delete the folder. But if I wanted to go back and say, copy this disk, I could copy that disk and give them a copy and I'll keep my original. But let's go look at the data project. I click on it. Now it says to add the files to this project, click the add button to or drag the files in this area. I could open up put it separate my screens and drag them over it says to remove files I can then click the remove button to the or press the delete key now if I have files in here and realize those are not the files I want I could select them and press the delete key now do not panic if you accidentally delete something in this once you've placed it in here it's not deleting it off your computer it's just removing it from the software alright let's add a project to add a project I can go to new project add or I'm just simply going to go and click the add button I know that I'm in my documents. I know that my assessments are here. I'm going to choose both of these folders and it should take all the contents in both of them. I'm going to hit add. It says should files be renamed fully Windows compatible. I'm going to say rename them for full Windows compatibility. So that way it's making all of my files so that if I were to open them on a Windows system it wouldn't give me any error messages that there were some illegal names that it had. So in my original folder, there could be a file that may not match up uh, from what I originally had. All right, now the contents that's in those folders, as you can see, those are my assessments that I had, my assessments. And then over here are my social science assessments. And I do have my final exam practice that I made for them as well. Now, it's not going to fill the DVD or the CD in this case. Uh, but this is just going to be a demonstrator. I will finalize it to show you what it looks like to completely go from beginning stage to ending stage. Now a DVD can hold 700 megabytes of data. I am only using 11 megabytes of data. So as you can see, it can hold actually over 700. You can see there's more than 700 megabytes of data free. It's kind of like a lot of wasted space because I will be finalizing it. Now here is where you can actually type the name of your data that you're backing up. So I'm going to just call it, I'm going to go back and say sixth grade assessments. Now I don't have to put science and social studies because once I put it in there and click the folders I'm going to see that it's the science and social studies folders. It just lets me know that when I put it in there I can tell by the name of like that will eventually change from blank CD to sixth grade assessments. Let me know that I have my assessments data disk in the CD drive. Now again I could put a DVD in there as well but look the software identifies that as a CDR. Now, I could use a CDRW, meaning that I could go back and rewrite it. You erase it and go back and rewrite it. When burning audio or video, please do not use an RW. Only use an R, meaning that you're recording, but you're not going to rewrite. That is the RW. Now, when you're recording music or even video, you can leave it open. You're not finalizing, so you can go back and add data. And you could do that to here. You could leave it open, but I'm not going to. I'm going to finalize it. So you can see the beginning stage to ending stage, because I'm not going to come back another time and add files to this. Once I got my name, once I chose CD, I'm going to then click the burn button. It's not going to immediately start burning. I'm then brought to a little dialog box that I can choose my speed. Now I always like to tell people to choose the lowest speed to make sure that nothing happens and try to minimize things in the background and, and shut things down that might be running that would hinder the burning process. This is just showing me my temporary folder that as I'm burning temporary files are placed here and it will eventually be cleaned up. If I wanted to burn myself several copies I would click this button. If I realized that hey I want to go add something to that folder I could cancel out of it. But for right now I'm going to burn the data to my CD and because it's only 11 megabytes it should burn pretty quickly so let me press the burn button 
and you should hear it pretty loud because the microphone is next to my laptop on the side that my DVD and slash CD ROM and burner is on so if you hear something whining after I press the burn button it will be my DVD slash CD burner in the process of preparing this disk so let me click the burn button alright before it starts burning it's getting the information ready to start recording there's going to be a little icon in the top uh, that will kind of symbolize the the burning process it's getting ready and it's gonna it shouldn't take it long it says eight percent done of burning it started the burning process but because there's only it says 10 megabytes here it give an approximate value now it's finalizing when it's finished it will eject the CD now as I said in other videos if you watched them before this one uh, just because it says burning CD is 100% done or completed that doesn't mean you can reach down and take it off because it, right now it's finalizing your CD and then once it finalizes it will go through and quickly check to make sure that your data is the data exact copy of what was on your computer because some people when they finish burning it they'll take it out they'll label it they'll delete the the computer files and if something happened it was corrupt and they go back and if they deleted it if they've emptied the recycle bin or the trash bin then they're not going to be able to restore it. Now notice it's creating an image checksum. It's checking the files out. Once it completes, it will eject the medium and let you know that it was successful. And as you can see, the data CD successfully burned. Now at this point, I can choose to make more copies or I can close out the burning software. Now I'm going to close out this burning software as well. Now to show you, I'm going to reclose my CD-ROM drive and the icon that disappeared that said blank CD notice it should pop up with the name of the contents that's now on the CD it should it's making me look like I'm telling you a lie but it should let me close out my original folder here oh it's reading there it is six great assessments so now where I used to have a blank CD, I now have sixth grade assessments. And I can double click on that, and I have sixth grade science and sixth grade social studies. If I click into them, I have my assessments that I made, my tests, and here's my final exam practice. It says MSL practice, meaning measure student learning. That's what they call them here in North Carolina, and I think they're only calling now uh, final exams. Here's the social studies assessments that I created and it successfully backed them up. I'm not going to open every one but I will pick one from each. Here's the test that I created for ancient Egypt and Kush. So that's a, one of the tests in the social studies. I will go back to my assessments and try one for my science. I'll choose photosynthesis and plants responses. And it looks like it was successful. And I knew it was because it came up and told me it was successfully burned. So that is how you use Bizarro to actually burn the data or make copies of your data file from your computer or laptop or device to a optical disk, such as a CD-ROM or a DVD. Now, if you got yourself a DVD, you can store a lot more data on a blank DVD than you can the CD. I just didn't want to take uh, so much time to burn a complete DVD and plus I don't use CD-ROMs as much as I used to. So hopefully you've enjoyed uh, watching this video. If you haven't enjoyed it, I at least hope you've learned something from it.